Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your Farming Simulator 17 Mod Spotlight. Today we're having a look at the Massey Ferguson 240 and the Massey 135. Those of you who know me, and have been watching for a while as I move my microphone closer to me because it's a bit too far away. Those of you who, who have watched the channel for a while will know that I have been eagerly anticipating the release of this. Um, so this could very well be a biased review. <laughs> <laughs> or a biased first look or whatever. Uh, frankly, I don't care. I wanted a Massey 135 that was good quality in farm sim. I'm hoping this is it. Now, if I go into the shop here, we'll start off by just having a look at what's available. You get the 135, a four-wheel drive version of the 135 that looks a bit silly in my opinion. Uh, the 135, in my eyes, always just has two-wheel drive. You get the 240, the four-wheel drive 240, and the 20BD, which is the same as the original 240 pack. Uh, albeit, I think... The horsepower of the 240 has been fixed. Now, for the 135, your customizations are the uh, swinging drawbar, swinging drawbar, pickup hitch, or EU hitch. You can get standard wheel weights or narrow tires. You can change the rim color to be red if you really want to. You can have shell type fenders or flat top fenders. And you can have a front guard, front weight frame, or front weights on the 135. Now, I've gone for the one that I've got here with the EU hitch. Uh, flat top fenders and front weights, so that's what you get there. With the 240, it is much the same as the original 240 pack, so let's just go through that real quick. Uh, and I'll only go through the 240 that is two wheel drive because all the others are pretty much the same. Swinging drawbar, EU hitch, or pickup hitch. You can put a front loader on this if you really want to now, that's the main difference now. Uh, you can get drum brakes, disc brakes. Standard narrow tires, wide tires, and then shell type fenders, or roll bar, or a cabin. Uh, I always kind of think that the 240 should have a cabin. I think the 20 is slightly different. Uh, yes, you can get 20B, which I think is two wheel drive, 20D, which is four wheel drive. Four wheel drive. Uh, standard road tires, or wide tires on this. Front loader, yes or no. Swinging drawbar, EU hitch, or pickup hitch, yet again. So, what I'm going to do actually, uh, because I completely forgot about this, is I'm going to get the front loader attacher for the two uh, for the 240 or get a 240 with a front loader attacher this is what it looks like without the cabin and i think yes there is actually a little front loader that can go onto the the uh, the 240 now you can get an industrial paint job if you so wish let's start off with the 240 because i know what to expect from this but you can get it in yellow, industrial yellow, if you so wish, to suit the uh, Massey Ferguson 20. And it does look rather ridiculous, I'll be quite honest. It looks kind of silly on the front, but it at the same time makes sense. Little 240's got top speed of 31 kilometers an hour. I'm going to disconnect the uh, front loader real quickly and just pull back, because I want to check uh, just... Toggle. Uh, or is it? What's vehicle? Uh, ve is it? Can I just put in debug? Debug. No. Uh, GSV vehicle. Toggle debug rendering. There we go. Forgot the command there for a minute. Now this claims 47 horsepower. Does it not? I'm just gonna double check again. Uh, 47 horsepower it claims. Now the old version had I think 19. This version now has 47 point, we'll say 47 horsepower. Tops out at about 47 point, 47 and a half horsepower. The 135, and I'll look at the detail work on this later, claims 45 horsepower and tops out at we just get this up to max speed, it should level out 45.2, it's flashing up as very briefly, but 45 horsepower as well. So let's get the debug rendering away, <coughs> and now kind of have a look at these in a bit more detail. So the 135, you can see, has very <laughs> it's very minimalistic, there is no cab. Um, I've seen some people complaining, because I'm recording this at, what, 9 o'clock at night, um, or last night. I've seen some people complaining this doesn't have a cab. I'm not going to be one of those people, because in my eyes the 135 never did have a cab and it shouldn't have a cab. 
Does that say what I think it does? Yes! Yes, it does! I... Is it going to be visible from here? Yes. Fantastic. If you look at the key, there is a teeny tiny little key ring on it that says Peter J. And that is a fantastic way for him to sign the mod. I, I like that tiny little detail. Um, of course, this being a very a re reasonably early Massey Ferguson, it uh, does have a sticker for the Ferguson system. And what else is on here that is of note? You got your Massey... Your, oh, Agco branded. Um, filters, which aren't fitting with the time this was released, but would be fitting with a, rest uh, rest uh, a restored version. And your Massey Ferguson branded... I'm uh, going to guess that's the oil filter. Maybe the fuel filter. Get a nice 3.8 at the back. PTO. Um, I'm gonna guess that's a hydraulic line. For trailers. Got your... Three... Four pedals. And... Almost everything's animated. You know, you got your animated fan in the front. Animated... Steering knuckles. The sound is quite nice. I'm really hoping somebody th makes this thing MR. I know that it's going to be mostly useless for equipment, but I think I found something that it might be usable on. Um, and you'll be seeing that later on this week. I do have videos that were recorded yesterday for me that were supposed to go up today. Kind of changed uh, the plan when this released because I wasn't expecting it. And the lights all work quite nicely as well. I'm not 100% gone on the Corona he's used. And the fact the light looks very flat, but that's kind of a personal thing. Um, Peter J, I have said for a while, is one of these guys who... This is a convert. Not that you'd notice it. This is a convert up from... And somebody can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. FS11, I want to say. Um... If you've seen a Massey 135 in any games, there was one in FS15 that I was using and trying to fix up that was unfixable because it had a cab and it looked ridiculous and the cab was atrocious. And yeah, it was based on this very this self same model. So to the people who say, you know, oh converts will always stand out as being bad, yes, they will. If they're done badly. If they're done right, like what Peter J's done, where he's taken the mod and pretty much rebuilt it from the ground up, you can get a really, really nice convert. Now, the only shame is that there is no banana loader for the 135, because this thing would originally, I believe, I might be wrong, and again, correct me if I am, I think this thing would originally have had a banana loader um, for front loader work, and you know, that the 875 loader for the 240 there doesn't make much sense being put on 135. It would look silly. It does look kind of silly on the 240. I mean, if I get uh, just one of the in-game default pieces of equipment, we'll get the universal bucket just for argument's sake, because I believe this should work. You know, you, you're going to see there's a, a bit of a disconnect between how this looks and how it works. And again, I'm not mentioning the sounds or the detail work of the mod too much. Because honestly, it's based on the 240 that came out in the mod contest. I think I gave a good, thorough, fair review of the 240 then. Um, the little niggles that I found, including... Or, that were found since. I don't think I actually caught the horsepower issue in the, the review I did. That has been fixed. Um, you know, all the little niggles. He put out a post on Facebook, on his Facebook page, saying, Hey, if there's any problems with the 240, let me know and I can fix them. You know, that's how a modder should work uh, if they're planning an update for a mod. Um, and I feel like the 240 did deserve an update when it was released. Because, um, you know, it, almost everything in the mod contest rushed, was rushed to some extent. Um, some more than others. Some, I think, were rushed a bit too early in their development cycle to be done for the mod contest. The 240 was quite late on its its development, um, I think, and... Ooh, you can lift... Oh, hey! You can get this thing to lift itself up. So we're just going to leave that one there. Um, the 240, I think, was a bit rushed. 
And it's a bit of a shame that it was. Does this thing have IC? Just out of curiosity. No, so you can't um, open the doors. For those of you that like IC, you're bang out of luck. You can probably get this thing to work so you can have IC. Um, if you're one of the people that insist on doing this, you can probably take the cab off the 240. Which somebody I saw was shouting that it's a, a cab off a Ford 7600 or what, Ford something or other. If you're so inclined to have a cab on the 135, you can probably take the cab off this honking on the 135 and have yourself a wonderful atrocity on your hands. Um, because in my eyes, the 135 is an open cab tractor with the old bucket seat. That's supposed to be kind of... This is... <laughs> Do you know what? There's a part of me at the back of my mind saying this is too clean. This needs to be rusty. This needs to, you know, there needs to be patches of rust on the, the beautiful chrome work of the front here. There needs to be bits of rust around the logo and the, the bit of chrome work there. There needs to be, the seat needs to be torn up a bit. The, the engine can't be this clean. It, there's a bit at the back of my mind that just says, you need to make a rust skin for this. And I'm going to say no to that bit of my mind because I love the fact that this thing looks so clean. It is, you know, if, if you want to roleplay this... And the 240, if you want to roleplay these tractors, they're restorations. You you know, somebody has spent, um, you know, for roleplay reasons, obviously. Somebody has spent hours and hours and hours, hundreds of hours. And Peter Chase done this. He spent hundreds of hours getting these things to look beautiful once again. Because, yeah, he could have done what so many modders are doing and just kind of brought forward a very rough redo of these but no, Peter J isn't like that. He's gonna take the time, he's gonna sit down, he's gonna look at these and say, okay, this is what was good before. This is what was deemed acceptable before. How do I get this looking good now? And you can see that even the um, dash displays are kind of animated. The gearbox isn't, or the gear stick isn't, which, you know, you can kind of do with or without that. But everything does have a little animation. Um, and that's been something that NI modding, which unfortunately, from the information I've been given, has gone the way of the dodo. Um, and this used to be in, well, an FSUK mod team mod, which morphed into NI modding, but it was all, um, from what I've been hearing, these are, everything Peter J is releasing is formerly the NI modding Euro DZN uh, FSUK mod team kind of lineage, and it's all stuff that he worked on originally. So, while NI modding the name may be gone, and there's a part of me that's sad if it is, because, you know, it's a, a name that back in FS13 when I was getting into Farmson, I associated with the very, very highest quality of mods. Um, but if that name's gone, then the lineage continues with Peter J. And in fact, the lineage never stopped because. If this, if the stuff that Peter J is releasing is the stuff that he worked on originally for NI Modding, then NI Modding survives in the form of Peter J. <laughs> because this is the highest of quality. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to park the 135 over in here, because I want to use this in a different review later this week. But, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say, I've been Rainbow Davy, you've been watching your Farming Simulator 17 Mod Spotlight. I should probably recommend these, shouldn't I? Yes, get these mods. I know they're largely going to be useless for modern equipment, but get them because they look beautiful on any farm. <laughs> I don't care. You know, I don't care if you use only new things or the biggest or whatever. If you want something that just looks beautiful and you know you don't particularly care about things being useful on a farm, get the one three five. I'm going to be doing that. I play with MR. I, the, I doubt these are going to be MRified or made MR compatible. I might have a look into it myself. But do you know what? I don't care. These are mods that I just want to have as display mods, display pieces on my farms. And if you want a display piece tractor in farm sim, you got a beautiful 135, you got a wonderful 240, with or without the loader, and with or without the cab even, you know, you can make your display piece tractors however you want them to be and park them up wherever you want them to be. I'll leave you by saying, I've been Rainbow Dave, you've been watching your Farming Simulator 17 Mod Spotlight. 
Until next time, stay safe and goodbye.